The constellation Cygnus is home to some of the most beautiful nebulae in the cosmos. And tonight we're going to be going after one of those. It's called the Tulip Nebula, a true star factory. But right adjacent to it is one of the most violent and frightening forces of creation, a true black hole, the first black hole ever discovered, called Cygnus X1. Shadow, what are you doing? Little buddy, come on. Whatever is under that rock, let's just leave it alone. We've come to a remote dark site in hopes of being able to capture Cygnus X1. Not the black hole itself, but the evidence that we can see around it that tells us there's a black hole there. Where we're at is high on the Colorado Plateau, approximately 6,000 feet in elevation. And it's one of the most unique places you would think we're in Saudi Arabia. Let's see if we can climb this sand dune. Cygnus X1 is also part of a binary star system where it is, in, it is caught in a violent orbital tug of war with a neighboring star. It's a supermassive blue hot star many times the mass of our sun, and what I've read, several hundred thousand times brighter than our sun. But it is caught in this orbit with a black hole, and it's losing the battle. As the black hole is stripping away from it, its outer shell, it's losing mass to the black hole. And as this mass is steering towards the black hole. It's creating an accretion disk around the black hole. This accretion disk is rotating or orbiting around the, back, the black hole in such a high velocity that it's heating up and emitting X-ray radiation. That X-ray radiation in turn, some of it is escaping the gravitational pull of the black hole and is uh, illuminating the nebulosity around it, or heating up the atoms of the nebulosity around it, and it's creating what's called a bow shock. Tonight I'm hoping that we can capture that bow shock. We can certainly capture the bright, brilliant star that is orbiting Cygnus X1, the black hole. It's moving so fast, it orbits it once every 5.6 days. Cygnus X1 also has a jet coming out of it that is detectable by X-ray observations, but it's not visible to uh, the human eye. Now we've reached the top. So speaking of plasma jets, I have captured a plasma jet, the plasma jet coming out of the black hole known as M87. It extends 5,000 light years out into space. I did a video on it, if you'd like to watch it, if you're interested in those kind of things. And it's quite visible, quite clear. I'll put a picture of it here just so you can see what I'm talking about. And if you want to watch the video later, you can as well. Now, as I mentioned, I don't think we can see the jet coming out of Cygnus X1. But again, I'm hoping to capture at least the bow shock and maybe the accretion disk. What do you see there, little shadow? I'll tell you what Shadow sees. Shadow sees sand dunes that extend for seven miles. They're created from what's called Navajo sandstone. This sand is very fine, and the wind has eroded it off of the Navajo sandstone cliffs that are all around these regions. And you see there's a gap right there and then at the top there's a gap up there creating a funnel and you can probably hear the wind and i apologize for that but i can't do anything about that the wind is why we have these beautiful sand dunes it's all pretty cool to me he's got his eye on something there he goes there he goes he sees something out there
one of the reasons I wanted to climb to the top of this sand dune is because I think there's a great analogy here. You know, the wind that is whipping up here, forming this very defined peak. That peak right there reminds me a lot of what the event horizon is on a black hole. Once something crosses over the event horizon, well, <laughs> there's no coming back. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> it's going to suck you in. There's a lot of similarities, frankly, between the cosmic forces of creation we find out in the universe and the forces of creation that exist right here on planet Earth. Little buddy, come on, let's go down. Let's show them what happens when we get sucked into a black hole. This is so much fun. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? These enormous sand dunes exist in Utah. We're just north of the Arizona border. It's all just incredible. You know, walking there was one thing. Getting back is another. <laughs> Even Shadow's tired. You sink in this stuff, you know? I wonder if anyone's ever invented sand shoes. You know, like snowshoes? Really kind of wider, not as big as snowshoes, but just like a wider tread so you can walk on the sand. Has anybody ever invented sand shoes? Okay, we're all set up. We're going to be imaging tonight with the Orion Maxitoff Newtonian 1000 millimeter focal length, 190 millimeter aperture, a beautiful, beautiful astrograph. I just really love this scope. And the camera is the Orion G26, which is essentially the same thing as the ASI M2600, I believe. I'll confirm it and put it down below. A great camera. We'll be guiding you using PHD2, and we're going to be using a sharp cap to capture the images. So all I got to do now is wait for Polaris to show up right about there. You can see there's not a cloud in the sky, not a single cloud. I mean, a couple way over there, but that's it. This is going to be a beautiful, beautiful night for astrophotography. So cross our fingers that we don't have any goofy little glitches that can happen. And uh, we'll check back in once I've got on the target and successfully capturing some images. Uh, we'll check back in and, and I'll show you what we have going on then. It's a little after midnight and we have exactly 60 stacked one minute exposure frames. I'm going to turn this light off and show you what we have going on here. Okay. What you see right here, that is the beautiful tulip nebula. It looks a lot like a tulip. You can see the stems inside, the shape, and so forth. This will look so much better tomorrow after I've post-processed it. But the image you can see is coming along quite nicely. Right there is Cygnus X1, the black hole being orbited by the massive star. We're going to let the rig do its thing and get as much data on this object as we can. Here, let me show you my camp setup. I just camp out of the back of the pickup. I got this uh, get flated topper, including one on the top to hold stuff. Shadow, you're thirsty, aren't you? I just throw a little tarp up. I got a refrigerator right there. around here <laughs> go up the ladder to go inside got a little chair I just sleep up there got my battery packs right there I'm recharging everything right now from last night and up on top I got solar panels that's really all I need 
I know it's nothing fancy, but it's easy to set up and I don't always use this tarp. I'm using the tarp because the sun is beating down on the refrigerator, so that's why I'm using the tarp. Yeah. Set up here in the campground. Sit here in my little rocking chair. All right. I got to process that picture from last night. Let's see what we got. Well, Shadow and I have been hard at work on the computer. Shadow's doing most of the work though, aren't you, buddy? And at home I have a you know much bigger monitor that I can use, but I wanted to see what I could do out here. We're gonna be imaging again tonight. So I wanted to decide whether I was gonna do this again or go after a different target. And I'm really pleased with what I see. The Tulip Nebula is beautiful. I can see the bow shock from Cygnus X1. And just maybe I caught the accretion disc. I'll let you be the judge of that. Here's the final image.